Good morning, my loves. How are you doing? This is Natalia and welcome to Monday morning. And I'm going live at 11 o'clock on the 11th of October. All the 11s. How exciting is that? So I hope that some of you are going to join me real soon. And I hope I don't have any problems with Facebook Live this morning because I did last week. <laughs> Not on here, but in my group, in my private group. Oh my word, we had a nightmare. But um, I think it's all part of the Mercury retrograde thing. That's my personal feelings on that. How's Mercury retrograde treating you? I've had no end of problems. I don't even have time to tell you all about the things that have happened to me. But then I am ruled in four different planets in my chart by Mercury. So it was only to be expected, wasn't it? So do you like my little colour changing um, little star? Now I got this from Primark. So if you're in the UK, in Primark home, they have these little colour changing stars and they're only £3.50. So I can highly recommend it if you are anywhere near a Primark. Go in and take a look. They, uh, you won't be disappointed. They have lots of really beautiful things. So I treated myself to that or treated us to that, should I say, just to bring us a little bit of love and light this morning. And um, as you can see, we've got a Selenite Interactive this morning. So get choosing one, two or three, which kind of Selenite um, shape do you like most on my altar this morning? So let me go um, ahead and say hello to everybody who's here. I've got 20 of you already. You're all keen. You're all waiting for your weekly messages. So good on you. Good morning, Fiona, Killeen. Good evening to Nicole over there in um, Australia. Laura Savage is watching. Hello, Laura. Good morning to Nancy. How are you doing? And um, to Robin Steele, good evening to you. Helen Quinn and Christina Cunard are watching. Good morning to Jane McGuinness. She's sending me lots of lovely little flowers. That's beautiful. Um, Mary Brockenstead Fisher is watching. How are you doing, Mary? I haven't seen you before. I think you're new. So welcome. It's lovely to see you. Hope you enjoyed the messages this morning. Good morning to Amanda. Amanda posted some lovely pictures of some little um, very cute Halloween party things that you were doing with your kids and it looked gorgeous. So you look like you had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lovely weekend, Amanda. And you're in the Gold Coast, Christina. Oh, you lucky, lucky thing. I'd love to visit the Gold Coast. I will do one day, I'm sure. Good morning, Barbara Phipps. How are you doing? Julie Hans, good morning. You're looking forward to the launch of my new product today? Um... I'm not doing it until next Sunday, but hey, <laughs> Julie is so keen and I really appreciate your keenness. But um, if you want to um, see, get a preview of my new product, which is pretty gorgeous, I have to say, even though I say so myself, um, I will be doing a preview next Sunday. You'll be able to um, sign up to, to get a special preview email that takes you to a video where you'll be able to have a have a sneaky preview or I'm doing a live launch of it on Wednesday the 20th of October on the full moon in, in Aries seeing as I'm Aries rising I thought I'd do it on the full moon in Aries official launch day um so hopefully you can join me live then I'll put a proper event up and everything thank you so much for the stars Barbara Phipps and Amanda you are so kind and lovely I do really appreciate it if anybody wants to send stars there's a little stars icon at the bottom you can even do that in the replay video um, I really appreciate your support and Ludmilla is here good morning to you Ludmilla and to Hazel Kings good morning to you Fiona White good morning beautiful how are you doing Lisa Lowry Rice, good morning to you. I think you're new too, or if you haven't commented before. Hello there, Lisa. It's lovely to have you with us. Shell Devat's here. Is it really early where you are, Shell? Good morning to you, my love. And Andrea Max Gimming. Oh, you caught me live today and you brought stars. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, I did have a wonderful weekend, Amanda. Thank you. Good morning to Kelly Lyons. I haven't seen you live for ages. That's so exciting. And good evening to the gorgeous Christiane Cotterill. You're all gorgeous, by the way. And, um, and to the lovely Sonia Anders, you're in the Gold Coast. I could come and see you in the Gold Coast too. We've got Christina and uh, Sonia in the Gold Coast. Oh, is there anybody else in the Gold Coast? <laughs> Julie, I think you're just 
just being Trixie, aren't you? Just being cheeky. I love your cheekiness. All right, shall we get started on the messages for the week? Shall we, shall we, shall we? So we've got our Angel Tarot deck, our trusty Angel Tarot deck. If you haven't said good morning, then do. Michael Shebel's here. Good morning to you. How are you doing, Michael? Not seen you for ages. I hope you're doing really well. So we're going to have um, two cards. Where is my Gemma Crow stand? Seems to have disappeared. I'm going to have to use the plastic one today. What have I done with it? Oh, it's over in the corner holding some affirmation cards. That's what it's doing. It's working hard for me. So I'll leave it over there to keep my affirmations. Um, it has been a few moons. Good morning or good evening to you, Danielle Bowen. Are you in the Gold Coast as well, Danielle? We're just having chats about the Gold Coast and how beautiful it is and how I want to visit. Marcy Hernandez, good morning to you, birthday twin. Oh, it's a while to our birthday, isn't it? Good morning to Beverly Annick Baldwin, who's just sent me some stars. That's so lovely. Thank you, Beverly. Um, it's 5 a.m. show. Oh, my goodness. It's too early, isn't it? I was up at 6-ish, taking Estella to the train station in the dark. But anyway, it's got to be done, hasn't it? We'll have one of those from my Oracle of Wisdom and Beauty deck. That um, orange card is from there. So, um, I'm so glad you caught me live as well, Beverly. Good morning to you, Colleen. It's early where you are as well. We can have a Gold Coast catch-up. I think I need to do an Australia tour and I need to do a US tour, I think. When they actually let me leave the country. So they're not letting the Brits out, are they? They don't let, want to let us into your, your countries. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> and it's 3am in Phoenix, Arizona. I was just chatting to a friend who lives in Phoenix yesterday um so i'll have to come to come out to phoenix because it's one of my favorite places you're going to fly over nicole well you can fly over and i'll fly back with you good morning julie julie johnson oh danielle that makes me so happy you'd love to have me there i'm inviting myself have you heard me right shall we get on with these messages so this represents the first half of the week so um between now and the end of wednesday going to early thursday I'm definitely coming over to Rhode Island, Amanda, definitely. And um, this is our card for the first uh, part of the week. Um, now, I do feel as though we're, we are in this very intuitive, reflective phase because we are, we are still well and truly in Mercury retrograde. Mercury does not start to station direct until the 17th of October. So we've got a wee while, we've got till next Sunday, and then the 10 days after that. So round about the, well, they say until the 3rd of November, actually, before things are back to normal. Um, but it is a really good time for us to reflect, to go inwards, to do a lot of deep diving, to really trust our intuition and to connect with that intuition of ours, which is wonderful. And you can see how she rises above the waves. Oh, she's got this really beautiful smile on her face. She's holding this beacon of light. And it's almost like she's summoning these people towards her, these, these uh, whales towards her. So it's like she's bringing in all of the good vibes because of the good vibes that she's sending out. So the page of water can um, speak about intuition, yes, but it can also speak about sensitivity and being overly sensitive or being very emotional. And it's about us being able to try and rise above those emotions because otherwise they will drag us down, you know. So do have a good cry. It's really good to release and to, to have that feeling of release. But equally, it's really important to rise above that and to inspect those feelings and go, why am I feeling this way? Um, also, the, the other thing about this card is that I'm really picking up very strongly a message for all of us is who are you surrounding yourself with? Who is around you? Do they lift you up? Do they empower you? Are you the one who's pulling the weight and, you know, that you're G and everybody up all the time and then they're just dragging you back down again? And so that's, this is a really important question to ask yourself about what do you want to rise above? Because she's rising above. Are you rising above to look down on your life and to see all the good in it? Are you rising above to look down and see where... There can be some toxicity where there are people who don't have your best interests at heart. They don't have your back. 
It's really important for you to detach yourself from that. So some people, you know, like if they're family members or their co-workers, we can't avoid being with them. We can't avoid um, mixing with them. Um, but it's very important to shield ourselves and to make sure that we're protected from any kind of, you know, energy they may be sending out that's less than pleasant. Because sometimes people are jealous of us. Sometimes people um, don't always celebrate with us when we have wins or things are going well in our lives. They're like, oh, I don't want that to happen for you. Why isn't it happening to me? You know, they can be, be begrudging of that. Or have you got those people in your life where you tell them that you've got an important dream or goal and they scoff at it because they want to keep you safe and they want to keep you small. They don't want you to grow bigger and beyond the the little bubble that you're in. So be mindful of all those things. Throw it all, you know, all the advice, the information, everything into the mix and make a, a decision based on being very discerning about things. So, you know, Mercury retrograde, I, I do joke about it, but it is a wonderful time for reflection for reconsidering and reviewing our lives. It's a really important time for us to slow down and stop and think about why am I doing whatever I do? Why am I with the people that I'm with? How are they enhancing my life? And if they're not, what can I do about that? Because you always have control. Even if, like I said, it's a family member, you can't get away from them, but you can manage how they make you feel or how much they can impact your mood or your, your well-being. Let's see who else has joined in just before I go ahead and do the rest of the messages. Um, Lisa Walkden and um, Renata v Vasalo is here. Good morning to you. Mary Carr is here. Teresa McElhill. Hello, darlings. Helen Early and Sharon Smith. Okay, so our next message is the, the second half of the week. Wendy Clements, good morning to you. So we're talking Thursday through to Sunday. What have we got? So we have what I call the stress and overwhelm card. So this is all about something coming to a head. Something coming to some kind of finality. I can hear a delivery van outside and I'm hoping that they're not going to knock on my door and I have to exit midway this through this live. Um... So tens are all about coming to the end of something, really finalising something. Now, you might be coming to the end of a, an important project. This is me, getting everything, all, all of the, the bits and pieces in a row, in alignment. And then at the weekend, being able to unveil this passion project. This is exactly me on Sunday. I'm going to be doing the pre-preview, the sneak preview to anybody who's signed up to that. I'll drop the link in later if you want to, to see this before everybody else. So some of you might be coming to the end of an important project. So you're having to burn the candle at both ends. You're having to work really hard. You're not there yet, but you will, you will be um, very soon. But the other thing that this ton of, uh, ton of fire can show us is where we are literally taking on too much. Where we said yes to everybody and we just can't handle it anymore. And something's got to give. And you know, overwhelm works in a really good way. Because it helps us to recognise where we just cannot go on doing the same thing. Saying yes to things that we really should be saying no to. And we're not saying yes to ourselves. We're saying no to ourselves by doing it all. And so what is really important for you here is that you understand what is draining your energy? What is literally depleting you? And this could happen if you don't do this. This is the rising above. This is the transcending. This is the distancing. And then, you know, you might pull something together and get to the end of it and go, right, that was really fun. I don't want to do it again because it's just too much for me. Next time I'm going to say no. Or this can say to you, where do I literally meet myself coming back? I want to bite my own tail off <laughs> because I'm just so stressed. And the other question, the really important question for you is, where do you never say help? Because you feel like you have to do everything and you have to be the superhero. You know, everybody needs help. Even superheroes have their counterpart, don't they? They have help from other people. They don't do everything absolutely on their own. And they are fallible. So it's really important that you just stop trying to be 
this, um, you know, pillar of support to everybody else and you're not supporting yourself because you don't ask for help and you think you can go on and on and on and you really can't. So everybody needs a day off, everybody needs to say, I need some assistance. And if you look around you and you think, I've got nobody who can help me, I'm just overworked and overwhelmed with everything, I'm the one who's doing it all, then go upwards, go to your cosmic team, say to your angels, please send an earth angel to assist me with this particular thing. Uh, or send me the money to be able to pay somebody to do this for me. Or, you know, send reinforcements, send help. And they will, you know. Ask your guardian angel and they will be able to, to sort things out for you. Now, the other thing with this card is sometimes it can be unfairness. You Things are, are going badly or that you're being piled with all this work or all of this responsibility and it's not fair. The angel to speak to in that uh, instance is Archangel Raguel to help you to achieve balance, to help you to get back into a place where there is an equal distribution of work, of labour. Okay, so just say, Archangel Raguel, please restore fairness into this situation. Please bring help and reinforcements. Raguel. Okay, so like ragu with an L on the end. All right, so our last card is the um, beautiful card of fulfillment and adventure in from my Oracle of Wisdom and Beauty deck. And this card, it's got so much blue on it and then this big shot of yellow here. So let's talk about the blue first of all. The blue's about the truth. It's about being honest with yourself about where do I need to change my life? Where am I not being fulfilled? Where am I stuck and not having adventures because I've committed to all these things that I don't love doing, that are just like a big burden. I'm taking a weight of responsibility on and if I just keep saying yes all the time, I'm denying myself the freedom to change my life and to um, set sail. So the yellow here, the boat represents you, it represents your life, it represents the ability to move forwards, it represents action. And the yellow is the solar plexus chakra, which is very much about empowerment, it's about belief in yourself confidence, determination to be able to move forwards in this way. And Kelly's saying, you keep pulling this card when you do readings for yourself. Did, when I did the video the other night in Angelic Circle, this one came out, didn't it? Isn't that interesting as the focal card when I was showing you? So it really is a time for you to weigh up, you know, use this Mercury retrograde energy to ponder on what you're doing with your life. Where are you making the most of it? Where are you? There's a van pulling up outside. Oh my goodness. They always come and deliver parcels when I'm doing a live with you. Um, where am I not freeing myself up to be able to be powerful enough to, to make changes, to feel change, the force of change? And, um, and to, to just write it down. You know, even if you have no idea how you would achieve the things that you want to achieve or the freedom that you want or the fulfillment and adventure. You've got to know what that means, what that looks like. And when you start to create that in your mind, when you start to write that down in your journal, that is when you're going to be able to get the universe to work alongside you because if you're not clear, the universe isn't clear. So you've got to give them a very clear picture of what it is that you want. And when you're clearer, it's amazing how much you manifest that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those weekly messages, my loves, and um, let us move on to the pick a card reading. So we have number one here, and that is the Selenite Unicorn Horn. So would you like number one? And yes, Julie, um, the little star is from Primark. So we love Primark. £23.50. I'm not affiliated to Primark. I just love it. And then we have the Selenite Tower. It's all glowy. Number two. Oh, somebody did post something through the door, but they've just posted it. They haven't knocked on the door. That's a relief. And then number three is a Selenite Sphere. Isn't that beautiful? It's a very pretty sphere. 
So that's number three. So let's have a look and see what your messages are if you chose number one. So your first message is about the crystal that you chose. And we have the, the unicorn horn, which is spirally. It's like going upwards. And it takes a while, doesn't it? It's not like this very clear vertical line upwards. And, you know, often when we make wishes or we have goals, we think of ourselves going from A to B. And that's that. And that very rarely happens, does it? We often tend to go down into bunkers and then come up the other side. We tend to go sideways. We go wonky. And then eventually we get to where we want to go. But that is because it's got some really important lessons to teach us. Now, did you know about the unicorn horn? It's um, situated in the unicorn's third eye. So it's all about using your intuition to know where it is that you need to segue to next. Or being able to, you know, if you have to take a sideways move or a backward step, it's about rather than going, why me? Oh, this is happening to me. Oh, I'm really fed up about this. It's to say, what's the lesson and the blessing that's contained within this situation or this um backward step or side step or whatever it is that's happening because it always does bring us an important lesson and a blessing sometimes it's hard to see the the blessing until much later so that's your message if you chose the unicorn horn and then um this is your card now the the card deck i'm using for this is the energy oracle deck by sandra ann taylor and the message is envy. I knew this card was going to come out. I knew it. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, when you just get talk about intuition, I had a sixth sense about this. So the envy card is, look at her. She's living in this amazing house. It's pretty beautiful, but all she can do is look at what other people have got across the road and she's just coveting it. And she's just like, oh, She's got a veil over this cup and that cup is filled with, it looks like jewels or pearls. And look, she's all opulent. She's got loads of jewellery on. She's, she's wealthy. She's doing okay for herself, but she's not looking very um, kindly upon what's happening around her. So if you picked this, this card is saying to you, stop comparing yourself to other people. Are you doing that? Have you been doing that lately? Social media is the worst for it, isn't it? You know, like I can think, oh, I've got so many followers. This is really nice. I'm building my, my following. I'm doing really well. And then I look at somebody else and they've got 100,000 followers. And I just think, oh, in comparison, I'm doing rubbish. And you're not that person. You're not the person who has 100,000 followers, although you might be. You are the person who's in their own lane. You've got your own challenges, your own successes, your own hills or mountains to climb and it's not your place to be looking on others and making comparisons okay that's the first thing this could also be be careful who you tell about what you're doing because some people can be very um unsupportive they could be very uncharitable about what you're doing so you're telling them and you're like oh hey this happened to me i'm so happy and then they're like Oh, have you ever done that where you've told a friend about something good that's happened and you see their face curl up like, oh, you, that's not fair. So it is very much, Julie, about quality, not quantity. I firmly believe that. And, you know, I was listening to a podcast of somebody a few weeks ago and she was talking about the rise of the micro influencer and that a lot of brands are turning to micro-influencers now rather than the big people who've got a million followers because they have no intimate connection with their followers. Whereas when you've got a smaller following, like we have on a Monday, we can all get together and we can chat. And I know so many of you so well and you're friends with me on Facebook and it's just love a lovely community that we have. Um, so whatever you're doing, you might trivialize that by comparing it with other people's successes but really you're in your own lane and your success and your life path is completely different to that other person you're trying to compare yourself with you're not comparing apples with apples are you so yeah careful who you talk to um who doesn't have your back who's not really your cheerleader 
And also, don't um, compare yourself because you are a true gem and you are absolutely unique and it's your, your job in life is to be you and that's your superpower. Okay. And then your second card is, we have the lost card. So during Mercury retrograde, you might be feeling a little bit lost. You might be feeling a little bit like, I don't know what's next for me. There's a lot of question marks around the future. And this is the perfect time to be lost in quite all, all, all I can't say it, all honesty. <laughs> this is this is the time. If you're going to get lost at any time, it's going to be Mercury retrograde. Because the truth, this is the loo of the truth. The truth is coming up. And so it's very important for you to stay calm, to stay within the solitude, because that is where your treasure lies. That's where we find buried treasure, when, we, when we're still, when we stop for a moment, where we take stock of things, where we allow ourselves to get lost. And um, what do they say? All who wander are not lost. So you might be wondering at the moment, do you have to categorise yourself as lost? I don't think so, because in wandering and having questions you're finding answers aren't you if you don't have time or peace of mind to ask those big questions you'll never get those big answers you'll always be like this chasing your tail running around overwhelmed carrying all of those ones and that might look you know from from here you might look at that person who's got all that going on and think oh look at them but actually, would you want that? It's a burden, it's a responsibility. And it's important for you to, to be honest with yourself about what you really want. So Sonia, what date does Mercury retrograde finish? It finishes on the 17th of October, but it's in shadow after that, where it has to have its cosmic coffee and it has to wake up. So they say that the 3rd of November is where we really go back to normal. So we've got a wee while yet. Brace ourselves, buckle, buckle yourselves in. So here, if you chose number two, we have got the Selenite Tower. So you are glowing from within. The light is within you. You've built really strong foundations and the only way is up. I always feel as though this tower personifies the hard work that it took to build the, the foundations, to really um, work our way upwards to the summit ascending that's what it's all about and so all of that time that you spent creating the foundation was not wasted it was absolutely perfect because it's enabling you to be glowing it's enabling you to shine your light and to get to the pinnacle of whatever it is that you want to achieve so let us see your energy oracle card and we have victory, so that fits really beautifully. And we've got another number 10, so you had two and eight together, you get 10. And that is, again, something coming to full, fullness, some culmination. Now, we've got that full moon on Sunday, on the 17th of October. Sorry, on, on the 20th of October, we haven't got it on Sunday. We've got it next Wednesday. So we're talking about full moon next Monday. So... um. In the meantime, this is a really important time to push through on anything that you would like to um, see going over the line, you would like to come to fullness, that you'd like victory around. You've put those foundations in place, they are supporting you, they are giving you this wonderful cushion in order for you to ascend higher. Um, and you are golden already, you know, Regardless of whatever you outwardly achieve or where, where you're outwardly victorious so other people can celebrate with you. Celebrate all of the wins from the times when you got up after you failed or you felt like you made a mistake or you were burnt out but you just kept going. There's so much victory within those um, defeats or those, um, those dark times, those, those wobbly moments. So, you know, always celebrate your victories, every tiny little one of them. And then your card from the Oracle of Wisdom and Beauty is Magnify the Beauty. Make the world a better place. You are going through a big transformation. I think that, you know, if you've been stuck, if you've been building those foundations for ages, 
you feel like one of those Egyptian workers who was, you know, imagine them trying to build those pyramids and how long it took them all in that blazing sun. And then, you know, when you come back, have you ever seen it when people are doing some kind of construction work and there's this empty space and then the, uh, the builders are starting to put the foundations in and nothing much is happening and then you don't go past that place for ages and then one day you drive past and they've built this structure and it's like wow it's like a big wow moment isn't it that happened to me the other day I went to Liverpool with my daughter she's uh, studying at the University of Liverpool so we went with her there for the day and because of Covid I hadn't been to Liverpool for about 18 months and they had been building this huge structure and it was finished. Um, and my daughter was like, I would just went, oh my goodness. And she said, oh yeah, have you, you haven't seen that, have you? And it was just like wasteland. And then all of a sudden there was this amazing building and it's got all this lighting on it. And they've got like this um, giraffe print on the outside of the building. It's amazing, really cool buildings and architecture in Liverpool. So I was blown away by this. I was like, wow, that rubble is transformed into this and it seemed to happen overnight but obviously it's taken a, a very long time to do so you are transforming this is a really important week for you and there's a lot of change coming so get ready to set sail and change your life fulfillment and adventure awaits you after all of the effort and energy you've put in okay so our final message is for the selenite sphere Actually, you know what? I have a selenite sphere. This is not the selenite I picked up. Ice calcite. This is ice calcite. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like a piece of ice. I'm going to try and get it in the light. So the sphere shape represents something coming to fullness. Something coming full circle. And... Um, Vera is saying, can I please have a message? Vera, um, you might have missed the beginning, so you have to watch the replay where you get to choose one, two or three. I don't do individual card pulls, my love, because everybody starts to get hostile and fight with one another. So we always do it like this and everyone gets a message. So, um, yeah, this is this is, you know, breaking out of a time of being frozen and being able to see everything come full circle so it could be again that there's some kind of ending and you're going to be able to have a new start with something the sphere in crystal form emits its energy in a really smooth and even very gentle way so there's um, a very gentle time it's, it's about taking care of yourself it's about really nurturing projects to life nurturing yourself um, so it's a really beautiful shape um, as a crystal. Let's pop that down and then let's hear what your message is from the Energy Oracle cards. Look at that. So again, we've got another number 10 here. Um, nine and one equals 10. And it's a time of rest and rejuvenation for you. Powering up again. So you might have been working really hard. You might be like this card where you've been working hard on completing something a cycle is coming to an end maybe you're feeling a little bit like oh i'm not ready to let go of that maybe you are but certainly by the full moon next week you'll be letting go of something or something will um be coming to fullness and nicole's saying is this residual 10 10 energy because it was the 10th the 10th yesterday and um and nicole recommend Nicole reminded us about that. So yeah, it was a really significant time. Isn't that interesting that we're still getting, picking up on that? So quite a few of us, it seems, are coming to the end of a cycle, an important chapter, the end of all of the hard work, all of the foundations that have been put in place. This is the rest of Mercury retrograde. It's not saying rest on your laurels and do nothing, but it's about saying it's like when you plug your phone in to recharge, when you plug the power cable into your laptop or anything that needs um, some energy. We can't just drain the energy out of our devices and then leave them and go work. We have to give them time to boot up again, to power up again. And this is you getting the energy of the universe breathing it all in, just taking time out for yourself. Again, it's like be gentle with yourself. You've done a lot. 
you've come to the end of an important cycle, there's a new one beginning, you're going to need the energy to really um, branch out and to, to move ahead into, into the new energy that's coming your way, the new things that come in your way. So do that, will you promise me that you'll do that? And then here we have the beautiful lion card. And, you know, the lion is all about courage. I always feel as though the lion energy is about the, the courage. The word courage is, is the heart in French. Cour, cour. And it's about um, almost like being true to what you're passionate about. That your vivid life, it's important for you to live the life that you want to live. You know, it's coming back to this card, isn't it? Where does fulfillment and adventure lie for you? Where are the changes that you need to make? You know, all of this sort of burnt orange colour is very much about the sacral chakra, which is about us being true to ourselves in terms of our joy and our passions and having the confidence to be able to put those first, prioritise those things, to get involved in those things, to get creative and curious, the power of now being in the moment. You know, the moment is all we have. And if we're hating the moment... We can do something about that, can't we? We can. We do have choices. We can say no to things because we've got the wisdom. You know, okay, we might say yes to something and then it turns out that, oh gosh, that, that was such a mistake. I should never have said yes. And it's okay to say no. It's okay to change your mind or to say, I won't do that next time. And I prioritise me. I'm going to put me and my joy first because the moment is all I have. And if I keep living in, oh, next week I'll do it. Next week I'll make a priority for myself. Or next year, 2022, you know, how many people at the, um, on social media at the beginning of the year go, oh, this year is going to be better than the last one because the last one was rubbish. But they do nothing to change it. They do nothing within themselves or outside of themselves. And then they're there at the end of the year going, this year was rubbish, next year is going to be better. How is it going to be better Unless you prioritise your ability to rest, recharge, to meditate upon what do I really want? Who am I and what am I creating? Go easy on yourself. Okay. Use the end of this chapter to create a chapter that is just how you want it to be. So um, Amanda's saying the lion's been coming through for you a lot this past week. You have to look up lion energy. They're so majestic. And it's all about your sovereignty. It's like you're in charge, Amanda. You know, you are the, the sovereign. You reign in your life. And Janine's got this card placed in your bathroom shelf so you can see it to remind you every day. Oh, that's so sweet. I love the idea of that. Oh, and Amanda, you did. You laid about yesterday lots of reading and cuddling with your kids and put off some things for another day and feel so refreshed. That's beautiful. So, my loves, that is our um, conclusion of our readings for today and for the week. So I hope it's a good one. I hope it's a wonderful week for you, a week where you say yes to yourself and no to the things that you don't want to do. Um... And also, don't forget, if you want to find out about my new product launch, if you want to get the early preview, then you can just um, click the link that I'm going to share later on my page, or you might have already signed up for it, where you get to find out first. And I'll be doing a live launch on Wednesday next week at the full moon. So thank you so much, and um, sending you lots of love and angel blessings for a wonderful week. <laughs>